All right, hello everybody. We're going to be talking about today's patch notes, the mid-season patch 8.7, and there's a lot to talk about. Uh, I think it's pretty exciting. I'm a little bit late to this because I was in a meeting, but that's okay. We're just going to get straight into it. First of all, we've got the Stranger Things skins. These are awesome. I'm actually a fan of the show, but I haven't watched it in a while. I'm not the biggest fan, but I liked it. So Eleven Scylla, that one looks great. Hopper Apollo, kind of hilarious if you don't even watch Stranger Things. So I know a lot of people are like, I can't wait to play a middle-aged man in Battleground of the Gods. So even if you're not a fan, you got that. Demogorgon, which, you know, Deba Daylight fans will be happy to see Demogorgons in Smite 2 now as a skin. Mind Flare Savannah, I love this skin. I actually, this might be the only skin I'll use over Barbara Savannah. Not all the time, but now and then. So I'm definitely getting this battle pass. No way. No way I'm not. Also, we've got a bunch of people in chat. Hello, Sick Gandhi. Hi, everybody joining in. Um... I'll explain how I'm doing this stream at the end, but I just want to jump into patch notes. So there's some technical difficulties I'm having, but I'll explain it at the end of the the recording because people just want to talk about the skins and changes. Uh, Star Court 11 still, that's cool. This one of her outfits in a different season. Uh, another Hopper skin, also cool. Hyperspace Loki, uh, kind of a nice skin because, I don't know, a lot of the Loki skins are kind of all over the place with themes, and, I mean... I mean, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It's a good thing to have very different skins. So there's another different one that's not really like the others. Crimson, Magus, Morgan, Le Fay. Oh, I actually thought this was a Medusa skin when I was scrolling through. Oh, it's a Morgan Le Fay skin. It's not Medusa. Oh, I thought I thought it was Medusa. That's awesome. That's cool. Looks like Nox. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. I, I thought it was good. Medusa skin. I was just scrolling through, but no, it's uh, Morgan Le Fay. That's fast. But they usually add skins pretty fast for new gods. Might of Neptune, Poseidon, that looks awesome. The Kraken, of course. Uh, I'm not a Poseidon player, but looks great. This one I wasn't expecting. Sunny side up Bacchus, and he's like a bunch of pancakes that are like barely being held together with syrup and just a bunch of breakfast foods. I like it. Uh, very unexpected. I might get it. I like the goofy skins. Those are my favorite. So, I mean, I'm happy for it. Uh, Doom Slayer Sensei, Sensei the Morgan. Looks neat. I mean, to me, there doesn't look too much to it uh, unless you look in game and stuff to see the abilities, which I can't do right now. But hey, cool. You love it, likewise. <laughs> nice. Uh, Shadow Tech Chertabog. Oh, another mech skin. And eh, the mech skins. I used to be a huge fan of the mech skins, but now they make them all the time. So for me, it's kind of like, okay, cool. I mean, all right. Coral Coast Yaboja. That skin looks great. That's fun. Looks like just a fun summer skin. Uh, and then Danger Noodle Kukulkin. This is unexpected, and I love it because everybody calls Kukulkin the Danger Noodle, and they went to go... Act I, I would have never thought of making an actual skin with a pool noodle and the googly eyes. I love that. Uh, I hope he doesn't look like too skinny in game, but man, that's so cool. I, I would not have thought about that. I did exactly the type of skins I love. Danger Noodle Kukulkin. I'll be using that. Sandcastle slash or Daji. Uh, not really my type of skin, but, you know, like a, a beach skin, I suppose. Shadow, Sparrow, Jingwei. Very cool. I like these shadow skins with the masks and stuff. I actually don't have that many of them because sometimes they're kind of hard to get, but uh, I really like the theme they have for these. And also very different than, you know, normal Jingwei. Maybe a more serious skin for such a goofy character. They should make a Worm Yorm skin. I think it might happen. Alaskan Bullworm. <laughs> they can't do that. Or can they? I don't know. Is Alaskan Bullworm is this from SpongeBob episode copyrighted? Do they get that? <laughs> they could do a big earthworm. They just can't probably can't say the Alaskan Bullworm and reference it. Or maybe they can. I have no I have no clue how that works. Okay, so there's this just information about the battle pass. I mean, that's probably not too important. Uh quality of life. Uh, they're resetting anybody Diamond 1 and above, resetting MMR 2400 and above. So new split makes sense. Here's, look at this, this little detail in the tiniest text that's in like, it's like hidden away, but increased ban count from five to six per team in duel. That's huge. Uh, for those that don't know, when duel, when I started playing duel, there was, two, I think, two bans each. And it was awful. Then they added a ban. It was great. And then too many OP characters came out. So then they added another one. And then they added another one. And my this is my opinion, and it's always been my opinion. 
adding a ban per team is a band-aid solution to what dual needs dual would need its own ban system or just something i don't know uh there's been many systems proposed but that's what it would need in the long run but as much as i don't like band-aid solutions they work i mean adding another ban is huge you know what i mean so that's pretty awesome uh just you know you'll see less goddies and stuff like that or less as nami's so you can get an extra band band the gods are annoying i like that um fixing this is just a bunch of bugs i do you guys want me to go through the bugs i mean based on this page you can see bug smite's a buggy game and they're fixing a lot of stuff uh i will say i'll go over a few important ones morgan lefay they said they fixed an issue where she was causing a perma slow which is very often and then they hot fixed it and apparently it's still in the game so uh they fixed that over here so i guess they fixed more issues with that the rest are just, I mean, general bugs. I think I can just scroll through these for the sake of the stream and video. If you really want, it'll be in the description if you want to look at those in detail. Uh, Smite 2 win? Oh, we can only pray. I don't think Smite 2 will happen, and I think it's not possible, as much as I would love it. Sad. Okay, so these are just bugs, too. Just, just, just know a lot of things got fixed, and I'll, I'll be honest, sometimes they say things are fixed, and then... A patch or two later, it turns out it's still not fixed. So, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. Okay, huge changes to Conquest. I am not a Conquest player, but I am still going to go through these because it's still hype as hell. Ocean's Fury Conquest update has arrived. Does anybody have any links to how this map looks? Because I have no clue. And I feel like that's what people want to see. But anyways, I can edit that into the video or uh, for stream, I can show you guys really quickly. Or try to. Um, I'm having issues with showing my screen and stuff. Um, so essentially a raging storm summoned by Tiamat, uh, was that culminates, culminates in a massive tidal wave washing over the lands between Olympus and Babylon. The sky's clear, shining a light on the effects this event has on the map. The storm has passed, but we see just outside the map still ain't, she still seems angry or the seas just it still seems angry. Uh, map changes. So. They're adding a side jungle area on the outside of the lane. And Landmark here was washed away by the way. This is on Solo, right? Uh, God, it's a big wall of text, you guys. Huge wall of text. Or maybe it's a duo. I see duo lane here. Uh, but they're adding camps. They're adding duo lane. Oh, it says right here. I'm, I'm blind. Sorry. I even read that. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Duo lane alpha harpies have had their pathing adjust and split into two alpha harpy spawns, one that favors each team. So that's cool. Uh, so easier to get that farm. Solo lane launches a, new, launches a new XP camp area marked by the wretched ship on the environment. And then, what is this? Back harpy locations on the red buff side have been adjusted to make room for a new camp. And I saw this. I'm excited for this. Map sliding has been returned to its 8.1 state. I know a lot of people were sad about the gloomy Conquest map. Some people liked it, but uh, I'm indifferent to it. I mean, I don't play Conquest, so <laughs> I do sometimes. But uh, yeah, so map is less gloomy. Yay. Everybody say yay in chat. Uh, various sea life buddies and damage are scattered across the map. Wait, did I say buddies? Puddles. I was like, buddies, like friends? Guys, remember, I can't read. I'm on a tiny. I'm reading this from a tiny laptop screen. It's a pain. Uh, and vine walls have been removed. Yay! I know people didn't like those. Now here's the big stuff. New objective, Draugr. I bet I better get that right right now, otherwise people are gonna be mad. Draugr, correct? I believe he was in the Hercules. Do you guys remember way back when the Trials of Hercules, the Dungeons and Dragons type adventures? high res introduced and they put a huge map into the game that was only for like two months that's awesome yeah from loki's revenge that's so cool that they're i always thought that was such a cool model to only use temporarily that was a lot of work so they're adding him into conquest this aquatic entity has risen from the deep to challenge the gods slaying it grants your entire team draugr's boon powers and phoenixes receive a stacking buff of seven percent Increased power and 5% damage mitigation for every allied god in the radius. Max three stacks. Last 240 seconds. 
So what I'm guessing, I, I mean, I'm guessing, I haven't seen the map yet, and we'll look at it in a bit. But I'm guessing you've got Fire Giant, and then you've got Draugr. And let's say you're behind, and the enemy team goes for Fire Giant. Instead of just trying to contest Fire Giant and throwing the game, or just w essentially just waiting at Phoenix to defend, which happens a lot. I guess now you could go for Draugr instead, and if you kill him, you'll have an easier time defending, right? That's how I feel about it. And then, you know, you could split three and two allies, and then with the three in mid or whatever, and now your Phoenix is stronger, so they can't just rush that down. I think it's cool. Uh, I hope it doesn't lead to too much camping. I don't think it will, to be honest, because if you're the winning team, and you're going for Fire Giant, and you see they're going for Draugr, you cut them off and, you know, and, and kill them. So I, I think it leads to more interesting play styles. But we will see. Draugr dies faster, so maybe it can be an outplay. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Who knows? You could try to rush it, or you could try to cut off your opponent going for Draugr, or maybe you try to take both. You know, you take Draugr first so that your opponent can't have a good defense, and then you take Fire Giant. I don't know. I think it's exciting. Here's all the stats for it. Uh, stats are boring, so we're skipping that. Well, not all stats, but most stats are boring. <laughs> There's a lot to go through, so I'll try to go fast. New jungle buff, support green. Remember last week when I was streaming you guys and I jokingly said they should bring back the green buff? Well, they've done it. Green buff is back into the game. Uh, back in beta, there was a green buff that I believe it gave you increased health. Or am I thinking of a different buff? But it was like a support buff. And I didn't really play Smite too much back then, but I always thought it was kind of funny that support got their own buff, and I kind of like that. And they're bringing it back in their own way. I mean, it's on the solo side i think so i guess it's or is it no it's not uh where is this buff this is by the red buff isn't it there's too much wall of text also you'll never have to fear accidentally picking up red while this buff is on you uh why would they add that in okay it's by draugr okay so never mind it might not be a support buff it's like a if it's on it by solo, the support's not gonna get this, right? Yeah. That's yeah, Nick Walker's saying it's by Draugr. I, I can't I don't see it in the wall of text right now, but if I were to go through it more carefully, I would see. Draugr minion holds this buff on the red cap side, just outside bases. Well that that I thought Draugr's by solo. Am I miss No, it's by duo. Oh my god, I'm getting this all confused. I I need to open this mental map. Let me let me let me go to what Nick sent me. Let me go to what Nick sent me real quick and see what his. I think that was the map, and we can look at that. That's what I need right now. Draugr's by duo, yeah. Let's just watch this too. Yeah, I, I'm I'm confusing this too much. I apologize. Yeah. Okay, it's on duo. Yeah, I keep getting confused. My mistake. That's cool. Oh, he's doing the sweepy sweep motion. That's cool. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think I might be losing you guys. Uh oh. My mouse isn't working. I don't know if my voice is. <laughs> you seem fine. Well, that's because the the computer I'm stream the computer that's streaming to Twitch is all the way in New Mexico. So I'll explain that at the end of the video. But uh, I think the what I'm the laptop I'm on right now. Uh, I think the internet's spotty right now. But I mean, as long as the stream's fine, that's what matters. Okay, cool. Very cool. So, yes, support gets their own buff now. And it gives HP 5 and... What does it give? Support green buff. Yeah, it gives... How? Oh, no, this is what... This is what the minion is. No, 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 this is both. L300, physical power, protection, magical protection, XP, gold, scaling... No, that's that's the... This is the minion stats. That's not what I'm looking for. What am I looking for? Here it is. Enhanced grants, 10 HP5 and MP5. So it gives HP5 and MP5. 
I think it would be cool if it gave some base health as well. Uh, I think that would be neat, but I, I guess not. That's okay. For duel, I don't think they're adding that to duel though. Oh, Maple, you're talking about uh, something we're getting to. Oh, so hold on. Let's continue. Um, so what is this? This is okay. So this is uh, buff changes. So damage buff now gets 10% life still. Speed buff now gets 7% movement speed. That's cool. Uh, mana buff now gives 15% maximum mana. I didn't even know it did that. Okay. <laughs> What? It does give base health? The, oh, this is the enhanced version. Oh, I'm stupid. Jungle buffs on nearby allies god will not expire. This effect does not apply to other support buffs. Also grants 50... Oh, so I thought this was just the effect, but it's the enhanced buff. Also grants 50 maximum health and mana, plus an additional 30 for every 50 total protections for the wearer. Oh! That's amazing. I, yeah, I completely misread this. I thought it was just going to give 10 MP5 and HP5. I was like, okay, I guess. This is cool. So if you have green buff on you and you're Geb or whatever, and you're by your mage, their buff's not going to expire until yours does. That's, that's interesting. Or next to your ADC with their purple buff. Wow. And this is super cool. I really like that buff. Okay, that's way cooler than I thought. I thought it was. Nice. So I got what I wanted without even realizing it. Okay, let's let's keep going. There's a lot of changes. Uh okay, so mana buff. I didn't even know blue buff in conquest gave in like maximum mana, but here we go. Here we are. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me take a breather real quick. <clears throat> okay, fire giant, they increased the stats because it was too weak. Uh same thing with Gold Fury. Same thing with Oracle. They increased the healing for Scorpion and made it weaker. Then they nerfed the Alpha Harpy. Dude, the Alpha Harpies will, will mess you up. So that's cool to see. Okay, Joust and Duel. Yay, the game mode I play. Once a Phoenix is slain, all range autos will pass through it. Pedestal. I believe we noticed. I got to play the new map for a day before I went on my trip, and I haven't gotten to play it since. And this is like one of the first things we noticed is when the phoenix dies, you can't... It's like a half wall. It's like Thor's wall. No, not even like Thor's wall. It's it's a weird in-between where abilities can sometimes go through it, but autos couldn't go through it, and it, it was just not persistent with the other maps, so they fixed that. That's cool. Less, is a, less of a bug, and I think more of just that that's how that Joust map always has been, and Smite has changed, so now the phoenix has changed with it. So that's cool. Uh, Benevolent Starter Item and both of its upgrades are banned in these modes. So no more Animosity Duel. That's awesome. I don't know what state Duel is in since I left, but when I left, you know, with the previous map, people were going Animosity every game. If that was still happening, that's unfortunate, but hey, they're removing it, so I'm happy. Yeah, Animosity was kind of lame. Animosity was only cool on, like, Jeanque or, like, meme characters, right? But then you build it on, like, Vamana, and you just all and ignore your opponent and take their phoenix. It's it's boring, right? So, uh, very cool that they got rid of that. Yeah, compassion. Let me tell you, compassion in duel wasn't meta. I mean, they banned it for joust, surprisingly, banning compassion, but whatever. I mean, I know people hated benevolence anyways in joust, so I guess it makes sense. All right, let's continue. Uh, Arena now is going to be the Upside Down map from Stranger Things. If you don't watch Stranger Things, there's a world called the Upside Down. And it's kind of cool. It's like a, it's not like physically upside down, but it's like a parallel universe type thing where things are kind of messed up. So that's neat. Uh, med okay, meditation cloak rework. This is kind of good, but I don't know. I this is the type of thing where I can't tell if it's going to be picked up a ton or just ignored like old meditation. But when you use it. All allied gods within 50 units, I assume including you, I think, uh, heals 8 plus 5% of their missing health and mana each tick. So this basically means if you're all at low health, you know, you're getting almost 20% of your missing health back over, uh, what, 4 seconds? But the big thing is when you upgrade this. So like this on its own, I don't think it's too strong. I think it's pretty 
okay. Like it's it's a nice pickup if you don't have any healing. But I can't imagine people are really going to be using it on conquest more than, you know, like. I mean, missing like percent health is strong. That's what made old old meditation kind of good. It was miss percent health. Current meditation is not percent health, so it depends on your builds, obviously. This is where I think it's interesting. When you upgrade it, each pulse reduces cooldowns for all abilities by 0.5 seconds. So let's say you've got like a bunch of mage casters and your support pops meditation. I, and I think you can stack these or like two of you use meditation. Also, I got to plug in my laptop with the charger, but I'll keep talking. Um, then they're getting their cooldowns back. You know, Kibo Vulcan, they use their three and one. You pop the meds. They're getting a second back every second so they can use their abilities right away because it's such short cooldown i think it's interesting i think it's almost worth picking up if you've got long range mage casters on your team i think that's pretty good yo sin of satan thank you so much for the sub uh i have a very strange streaming setup that i'll talk to you about at, once we're at the end and give me one second i gotta plug in my laptop So I actually think this this meditation seems fun, and that's what I care about the game. It seems fun to me, because if you really wanted, imagine if all you know your five man party in clash or slash or whatever, right? And you all decide we're all gonna get five upgraded meditations and run at the enemy, because. <laughs> If you were to use like five of these close together, like one, then wait two seconds, use another, and then wait two seconds, use another, that entire team fight, you're getting constant healing if you all stay together, and you're all getting uh, your cooldowns back, which I just think is hilarious. So whether it's good or not, I don't care. It seems fun. <laughs> yeah, okay, Sunder. Big change. Anybody that loves Sunder or misses the Sunder days, I think it's back. I think Sunder is officially back. It's no longer a troll item in duel. So let's read this. Fire a bolt that travels 70 units, stopping on the first god, dealing 10% of their current health. So that's less than the current amount, I think, uh, as true damage and reducing any active shields by 50%. So this is a nerf. The shield change is a clear nerf. However, targets to hit take an additional 10% damage for 5 seconds, stacking 2 times. When Thunder was built a lot in Duel, the reason for it was because it added increased damage on the level 1 Relic. That made it very strong for those first fights and stuff, and that, it made it fun, quite frankly. When they removed that increased damage, people stopped building Thunder because that was what gave you an edge. Uh, so that coming back, I think it might be built again. I think 10% is less than what it used to be. But I, I think it's fun. I think it's fun change. And it stacks twice, so obviously it doesn't matter in duel. But in other game modes, you know, if you want you and your buddies want to build it, you could focus the knocks or something. So I think that's fun and frustrating, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, nobody likes getting focused, but I think everybody likes focusing as well. When you're just with your buddies, you're like, hey, let's kill the Nox real quick. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so when you upgrade it, it's 15% of their current health as true damage. And it lowers shields by 75%. So still nerfed from the current version, but that's still really good. And then they take 10% increased damage, stack for five seconds. Uh, it can stack two times. So the upgraded version, not going to lie... You know, it's about the same. I mean, I was hoping the increased damage would go up a little bit, but they didn't want that. Yes, the relic has two two charges. Yes, that's why I mentioned that you 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 and your buddies could sunder someone, and it'll have two stacks. For, so that way, it would have twenty percent increased damage. Maybe I didn't say that uh, very well. Oh yeah, the cooldown. The cooldown's pretty low. Yeah. So I like it. Bracer. Sad. Remove the relic from the game. No more bracer. No more bracer of undoing. Instead, we get bracer of radiance. Say hello to bracer of radiance. Hello, said. Hitting both charges will just destroy any shields? Uh, no, not quite. So, hold on, let me go back. 
If you have two Sunders, and let's say someone uses Shell, the first Sunder will remove half of the shield, and then the second uh, Sunder would reduce it by half again. So just take it down to 25% of the shield. I assume that's how it works. If it doesn't, then that's weird, but oh well. Anyways, Bracer of Radiance. I think this is what Sentry, you know that old relic, the one that you could place wards? This is what that should have been. And I like this. Place a Radiant Glow at the target location for 90 seconds. Allies who move through the field gain 10% increased power if above half health, or 10% movement speed if below half health. This fragment acts as a ward. If destroyed, the cooldown of the relic is reduced by 20 seconds. So... You place this down to fight, you all get buffed or moving speed to get away or maneuver or whatever, and then you get it back in 80 seconds because it's almost always going to be destroyed. That's cool. I think that's cool. Uh, it, does it say how long it lasts for? Oh, it's only 8 seconds? Ooh. <laughs> it's alright. I mean, the reason I like it is the upgraded one, although... Even then, you're taking an entire relic slot. Maybe I don't like this as much as I thought I was. I would. I thought it would like place a normal ward, but also have this effect for eight seconds. But no. So the upgraded version is okay. Yeah, the upgraded version does. Oh my goodness. Okay. Place a radiant glow at the target location for ninety seconds. Allies who move through this field gain ten percent increased power if above half health, or ten percent move speed if below half health. This radiant acts as a ward. So, like a sentry ward. So this is super strong, because I feel like if you have two of these and you're constantly placing them, you know, in these areas, you have these big buff areas, and your opponents are having a hard time centering because you're constantly getting rid of them as well. I don't know. I think it could be cool. I, I actually, don't, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think it'll be picked up as much as I was thinking, but I think... Uh, I think a support would possibly still get this. I don't know. Oh! I'm sorry, you guys. I'm in a weird setup. We're going to scroll back up. I was just reading the patch notes, but now I'm catching up on chat. Wait! Sud I completely misread Sunder. This rel went okay. I misunderstood this. I read it, I just misunderstood it. So, you guys are saying this relic has two charges in terms of I can fire this relic twice? That's insane. Really? Wow. That's good. And I actually like the change because if you hit the same person, you're getting less damage because the current health, you know, the current health is less. That's cool. Yo, thank you so much for the sub, man. Thank you for the three months. Bologna, I hope you're having a good day. Okay, yeah. Okay, I misunderstood this. Sunder, you can fire it twice. It still stacks twice, but yeah, it just got twice as good in my mind, which makes the upgrade good too. Wow, yeah, I'm picking that up all the time. That's crazy. Okay. And I apparently misunderstood. And I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't able to watch a patch notes live, so I'm misunderstanding some of these. Um, it says on the start... Does this one say 90 seconds? It does say 90 seconds. So, so the buff the buff for Bracer of Radiance is only 8 seconds, but the, the ward itself is 90 seconds. Okay, so this is what I thought it was initially, and I think that's good. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. I'm sorry for having to go back and restate everything, you guys, but this is a lot of changes. I'm trying to go through it fast, but I also don't want to misunderstand things like that. Wow. I like both of these. I wouldn't buy this in Duel, of course. Well, maybe if I went like a Bracer of Radiance with Frenzy. That'd be such a meme. Or Bracer of Radiance with Sunder. Such a meme, man. That's fun. <laughs> All right. And here's the big change. This is like, I was thinking about this when I saw it, and I was thinking, this is like the before and after for Smite, okay? Because one huge change I think of Smite is back in Season 2 when they removed actives and they replaced it with relics. A lot of people left the game. A lot of people didn't like it. I still miss the, the old active system, uh, you know? But 
the the relic system has some cool stuff about it too and it's gotten better but what they're doing to smite is they're removing boots and i i'll give you my opinion right away i think this is a good thing uh they are removing all boots from the game and essentially players now get 18 percent movement speed over their first seven levels so i guess like at level one you don't have any movement speed at level two you get like a certain percent and then level three you get a little bit more and once you're at level seven you get the full 18 percent which is cool so they're removing the elixir of speed of course because no use for it but this means i feel like this adds a huge variety in builds right because the whole thing is you get your item and then you get boots or you get your tier one item then you get boots or you get boots right away. And once you're done with the boots, you're already getting towards the mid the mid game. And you kind of miss out on the build variation in the start of the game. So now, when you're already starting your full item, you get to see that a little bit more. So I think that's cool. Three movement speed per level. Yep, that sounds good. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I hope I'm not doing a terrible job with the patch notes, you guys. I don't do this often. But I, I like give, I like talking with you guys, giving my opinion. Okay, so Enchanted Spear, decreased magical penetration from 10 to 5. I actually find this quite sad. And they gave more power. Uh, I like flat pen. That, lowering this makes me sad, but oh well. Decreased physical penetration, yeah, same thing here, 10 to 5. Uh, they made it cheaper, though. So that's cool. And then all the upgraded items are cheaper, too, by 50 gold. Good to know, good to know. Thick of all, I like this change. Decrease attack speed reduction from 10% to 7%. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, so less attack speed reduction, which was the frustrating part about this item. But it now has more power. So, I mean, how much power is that now? Does this power give... Does It, it stacks three times, right? So now this item gives... Gives what? 95 power? Am I doing that right? No, I'm not. No, it gives 105. Is that right? If this item stacks three times, that's 105 power, physical power. Or how many times does it stack? That's its flat stat? Oh, I'm stupid. Never mind. Yeah, I was about to be like, what the hell? Yeah, this is his flat stat. So never mind. Five five power changes doesn't make a difference. For a second, I was like, are they giving Ikavo 105 physical power? I was about to go on the longest rant. So I was just waiting for someone in chat to correct me because I was thinking, this isn't this this is not what I'm thinking. And that was the case. Thank you, Nick Walker. Okay. Mystical mail change. I like this change a lot. Change passive damage from 40 to 30, so a nerf, but then plus one per level, which is so it's a nerf in the early game and a buff in the late game. I love these types of changes. It, it hits it where the item should be. Because, I mean, honestly, rushing mystical mail is kind of a meme. Like, you could, you know, queue or clash with your buddies, get five mystical mails, and then you're killing someone super fast in the early, and then late game, it does nothing. So it's a tiny change, but fun change, I think, because late game, it does a little bit more. Uh, decrease crowd control reduction from 20% to 10%. I mean, fair enough. I think I don't. I think that was fine. But oh well. I think the whole point of Wing Blade is to make you slippery, right? Without like giving you a bubble, like Mage Eyes Cloak. So they they're nerfing that. That's fine. This is a huge change, you guys, and I kind of hope it's not used too much when it comes out because I have so many ideas on how this is going to be strong. So Staff of Mirrodin reduced magical power from 110 to 95 but it has a new passive when your ultimate ability has finished casting you gain mirrodin's brilliance which provides 80 percent uncapped cooldown reduction that's right essentially match of the day you know decaying to 40 percent uncapped cooldown reduction over seven seconds uncapped cooldown reduction overrides normal cooldown reduction at the end of your 7%, 7 seconds, you lose Mirrodin's Brilliance. This can only occur every 45 seconds. So this is huge for a couple of reasons. Like, let's say I don't build any cooldown, and I just have Staff and Mirrodin, which is just 10%. And I'm Kuzumbo. And I fire my alt, my alt 
then I can use my two, my one, my three, get all my abilities back with my two, and then keep using them like match a day, you know, spamming nay nays and all this stuff without having to sacrifice an item slot for like Kronos Pennant and stuff like that as well. You could kind of do that with current Staff of Mirrodin, but now you can do this on essentially every magical character. Pretty good. Pretty cool. Uh, I wonder which characters will this will be strong on. But also, you're still using an item slot for this. I don't know if it's going to be OP. Uh, it's just fun, and I like that. It looks seems like a fun change. Yeah, for seven seconds, you're playing match a day, essentially. I mean, after three seconds, you're you're at, like, essentially, what, 60% reduction? So it goes away pretty fast. So you better use those abilities fast. You it you should not use this on ab gods with like channeled abilities, like Anubis is one, and I don't, I don't it would not be good on Anubis. You want it on gods that use their ability, and it goes on cooldown instantly. Like even like Ares, right? If you alt and use your chain, the chain goes on cooldown right away, but you still get the th other fires with the chain. I mean, the three is a channeled ability, but you could use just cancel it and then go back to your chains again. I don't know. Hello, Shadow. I hope you're enjoying your day. Does that cooldown reduction apply to the ultimate you just cast? I don't know. Uh, I assume not, because old Staff of Mirrodin only worked once your ultimate went on cooldown, so I don't think so. I Like, for example, I don't think this will work with Staffner, if that's the case. Hello, Bio, as well. Also, if you guys are watching on YouTube, I'm talking to my... Just saying hello to people in chat. Uh, you might not see them, but they are here. Okay, so war flag. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm like my stomach's kind of upset to be doing this stream. I don't, I don't know, but it's fine. Getting an assist when an enemy dies provides a stack of that gives one percent movement speed and two percent attack speed for eight seconds to nearby allies for ten stacks. Fair enough. While at or above four stacks, each time you damage an enemy, God. Restore 15 health and mana to nearby gods. Within 55 units, you gain 8 gold. <gasps> I like the extra gold as a greedy player. Does this work in duel? <laughs> I don't think it works in duel, but it might get a little bit of extra gold. It's just a meme. Warflag's always been such a meme item, even back when it was added years ago and removed. I like it. Uh, so does this work with Kepri too, right? When it says, it says, here's the keyword, right? Each time you damage an enemy god. So if I'm at four stacks and I'm Kepri and I hit my two on two enemy gods, does it just go in terms of giving me health and mana? Hi, Gactyl. Thank you so much for the 45 months. That is so long. I appreciate that, Gactyl. Thank you for coming to the stream and being a great mod. Because if you can just heal to, like, full health with Kepri 2, this is a huge buff to any type of support that's damage over time. Otherwise, I, have, I assume it's a once per ability. I assume it's once per ability. But if it's not, I think that could be fun, but very, very, very difficult to balance. So I'm going to assume it's once per ability. I said that, like, five times. Getting an Okay, so War Banner. Getting an assist for an enemy... Dying provides a stack that provides 2% move speed and 4% attack speed for 8 seconds to nearby allies for up to 10 stacks. Okay. While at or above 4 stacks, each time you damage an enemy, you restore 1.25% health and 1.25% mana to all gods and refresh the duration of these stacks. That's good. Oh, wait. Oh. With this, if let's say you clear the wave and get 10 stacks, and then you're chasing down an enemy, as long as you're hitting them somewhat periodically, you get to keep those war flag stacks. That's actually super strong for chasing people down. Like, as long as you're the support and you just keep hitting enemies, you're, uh, you're keeping those stacks and you're giving it to your allies, which is helping them chase those kills down. I think that's actually really good. Combine that with the talisman of energy. Yeah. That's one reason I actually don't like War Flag, is it's kind of hard to keep the stacks. So, good. Cool change. Again, I have no idea if uh, it's once per ability or every single time you hit them, because if that's the case, Kepri uses his two and he gets a full health. It hits like nine times in total, I think. Like three times a second. Okay, Corrupted Bluestone. 
uh, decreased physical power now provides 150 health. It will now provide its stacking benefit for applying corruption rather than actively tracking how many applications of corruption are ac active. Okay. The stacking benefit now lasts for six seconds. Decreased attack speed provided per stack from 15% to 10%. Stacks now provide 4% increased protections. That's cool. That's a cool change. Oh, hey, Amanda. So that's toll. They increased the heal on melee cleave attacks. I don't really, I mean, I'm okay with that. I'm indifferent to it. It's not a dual lull. And same thing with Death's Embrace. So small changes there. War flag plus talisman plus shoguns. Yeah. And uh, we'll actually get into shoguns in a bit too. Shogun. Oh, there it is. Uh, anyways, Berserker Shield. I love changes like this because. There's cool items, and then hunters are like, hey, I like this item a lot, and then they ruin it for everybody. Hunters are lame. So this item can only be built by Assassin's Warriors. Thank goodness. So now they can make the item cool again, increase attack speed, and increase physical protection. I mean, I hate... I mean, I do... In a way, I do like Berserkers, but the main problem with it was I, when I... You know, when you fight hunters with it, it's like, what the heck? Why are you using a shield? You're a hunter. Use them bows. Okay, so Shoguns, Kasari, they added this. Uh, this is big. Okay, so no more crowd control reduction. That's fine. I mean, it, I, I think that was one of those things that it was nice to have, but not necessary. Provides 150 health, which is cool. Increase attack speed aura from 25% to 30%. You guys. Shoguns has gotten a lot of attack speed buffs over the years. It used to be only 15%, and I was like, that's a good item. But now it's 30%? Oh my goodness. Did you already go over boots? I did, but uh, I, I like the change, essentially. Um, yeah, I, I like the boots change. Uh, how you doing, Black Eye? Thank you for uh, always being a great Olympian, by the way. But Shogun's giving 30% attack speed? That just blows my mind. Like, I know it's only a 5% increase, but you, you know, take a, take a step back and realize that that's like an entire attack speed item. Like, if your hunter decided to go full power and pen, and you've got Shogun's War Flag, they've already gotten a ton of attack speed from just that alone. Like, that's really good. And Talisman gives attack speed, too. Oh, my goodness. You could just go all of these items as solo or support, and then your hunter just benefits from it. You just got to stick with them, though. You don't like the boots change? Uh, so, I like the boots change because because I feel like it's going to make more build variation. I feel like in the early game, you really miss out on a lot of people when they're trying to build unique builds, because, you know, everyone's building boots. And by the time you're done building boots, the early game's ending. So I think it kind of gives people a lot more openings. That's how I feel about it. I would do a StarCraft reference for what it is, but no one in chat would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll say it for the heck of it. It's like when in StarCraft, when they increase the worker count, and now people could do way more starts rather than having to defend against cheese every game. <laughs> okay. Mannequin Scepter. Oh, wait. Did I skip it? I skipped Serrated. Uh, increased physical power from 25 to 35. Uh, that's cool, but I don't know. I mean, it, it's good. It's a good change. That item's good. It gives a lot of pen. Mannequin Scepter. Uh, so they gave it more damage. They decreased the stacks to compensate for the increased damage. And increase the health restored and mana restored on jungle. So cool. Same thing with the upgrade version. More restored on jungle kills. Okay, Sentinel's Gift. Decreased cost from 600 to 550. Wow, the 50 gold change. I say it's sarcastic, but I mean, it's pretty big in the early game. <laughs> That's an extra potion, you know? Increase both magical and physical protections from 7 to 10. Let's go. I, I would love to see the clips where somebody lives with one HP because of new Sentinel's gift. These are the changes I look out for. The tiny little things that you don't think matter too much. And then those three protections actually save someone. Okay, so Conduit Gem, 100 mana. That's cool. They buff Vampiric Shroud uh, to have more health and physical protection, so that's cool as well. Blood Soaked. The item I accused Hyras of false advertising, they have changed it. 
So they increased physical protections from 40 to 55, increased health fr restore from 12 to 2% max health. So they're basically making a death's embrace for mages. Increased mana restore from 6 to 2% max health. Removed bonus stacking lifesteal from the item's passive. So the reason I say this used to have false advertising is the item specifically said you can stack lifesteal to infinity, right? But you can't because, first of all, there's a lifesteal cap in-game, but the item could actually go above that. But it doesn't matter because it caps at 99. And then I was hoping, you know, Typhon's Fang would work with that. But it doesn't, of course. So I, I figured it was false advertising, saying that it stacks to infinity. So it no longer does that. Which is both sad and good. <laughs> but this is a percent health and percent mana healing. I hate this stuff. I'm always saying it. Don't introduce something that, inc that heals percent health and percent mana while doing something simple like just hitting abilities. Uh, it's it's going to cause problems. I guarantee you. But oh well. Sacrificial Shroud, increased magical power. I mean, it's not a high percent, I should say that. So they buffed the power for Sacrificial Shroud. Okay, cool. I mean, it's a pretty damn good item now. I'm a 115. I mean, it depends on which god you're building it on, but 115 power is no small amount. Warrior's Axe, increased passive bonus damage and health steal from 30 to 35, plus one per level. That's cool. Uh, let me catch up with chat a little bit as well. Let's see. Let's see whatever the people thinks. Um, Nick says, it feels like it'll lead to let's bully the lowest level characters since they can't run away, but level seven is so low it may not matter. Yeah, I can't imagine where somebody's super fed at level five or someone's super fed and they're level eight and they're bullying someone that's like level three or level four and it makes a difference. Like if you're that far behind, the movement speed is the least of your problems. Uh, if even if that's the case, they could change it so that you get movement speed based on in-game time rather than level, or a combination of both. Like maybe you get up to nine percent at level seven, and you get up to nine percent based on in-game time. You know, like that's something that could be adjusted. So I'm not really concerned with that, if I'm being quite honest. Uh, let's see what Black Eye said. He is an Olympian. I'm afraid of a tank meta as tanks can immediately go into defense now since they aren't forced into boots and a lot of guardians and warriors have nuts base damage and a huge power spike for hunters mages is boots so they'll be getting around the same power for the same price whereas warriors guardians don't need that i suppose that's fair i suppose that's fair but i think if tank meta came back and people are starting to build like huge defense items early then mages and stuff can build pen items early and then i'm guessing those pen items will get buffs like, I, I think it's just one of those things where this is a good change for the game and items can be adjusted around whatever consequences come. Like, I think when it's all said and done, this is going to be good in terms of variety and stuff and counters and, you know, just being able to counter your opponent and build into what you want early. And I don't know. I'm excited. Mages already build pen early, though. Meta start is Karen's coin, purple boots. Yeah, but now you could finish Karen's coin before you finish boots, because I, I, I think a lot of people finish their boots before Karen's coin, right? And you start building those stacks earlier, and I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just like the change a lot, and I'm looking forward to it. That's fair, Black Eye, too. Yeah, I, I don't know, but uh, those are some valid points. If tanks start doing tank things too much, I mean, I like tank. I like tanks personally, but tank meta... If it gets too bad, that's always bad because then people hate what I like and uh, then too many nerfs go through, you know what I mean? So I, I do want balance at the end of the day, but it might just take a little bit to get there. I just think without boots, this is good. Gotta wait till PTS. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, I, I miss Sunder. I, I miss good Sunder. <laughs> this provides MP5? Okay. So now, if you have this item, and you wait 60 seconds, or how, how long would you have to wait for an ability? I think you'd have to wait like five minutes <laughs> for something to use like a few abilities. I can't do the math in my head right now, but seven MP5, right? You would have, so after a minute, you would have essentially 
what's that? 40. I can't do mental math right now, you guys. I'm tired. Never mind. <laughs> but 7 MP5 is not that much. It's enough to be something. That provides 15 MP5, so that's, that's something as well. These are the types of changes where it's like, okay, it's better now, but I don't know how much it'll change. I guess if you're going a low, if you're not going Transcends, you're going like a Devo's build on a Hunter, and you don't have any MP5 in your build, this would help a lot. So, yep. Warding, warding Sigil, decreased cost from 700 to 600. Okay. Tainted Steel, decreased healing from 20% to 15%. You are now healed for 100% of the healing reduced. So, you, so it steals healing. Okay. I mean, all right, fair enough. Pretty good. That, that, that actually makes it pretty good. Uh, it's, you're not stealing that much, but you know, you're stealing something if they're going some crazy lifesteal build or some crazy healing build. Uh, I, I like it. But what does Tainted Amulet do now? Increased healing reduction from 20% to 30%. So now it's just more healing, and you steal, you, you're stealing 30%. Okay, fair enough. I like it. And Tainted Breastplate just got uh, protection buffs. I like it. I love Tainted Steel. I think, it's, I think Tainted Steel is such a cool item because it's only good when people are abusing healing. And it's a counter to healing. So it's like, if healing's not good, it's not going to be good because it's a counter item. And I think counter items are cool like that. Because if people are complaining about <laughs> Tainted still, then maybe they're abusing, using healing too much where, it, yeah, your opponent should be building Tainted still, you know? Anyways, Jade Empress Crown, increased health from 150 to 200. Cool. Uh, they decreased the cost of Tyrannical Plate. This is one of my favorite items in the game. And I almost never get to build it because it costs so much. So I'm so happy to see that. Like when I try to do some raw tyrannical shenanigans, I can't get it because it's so expensive. Let me catch up on chat a little bit again. Tainted stacks with other anti-heal. Yes. Oh, wait. No, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go back up. If you have 50% anti-heal in your kit, you heal for 50% of what the enemy heals. Oh, that is way stronger than I thought it was. It stacks with other anti-heal. That's really strong, Black Eye. Really? Yeah, no, this item went from where I was like, this is pretty good, to like, why would you never build this? You go Cerberus, Tainted Steel. Actually, I don't know if those passives will stack, but that's already 50% anti-heal with just this, right? You slap on a Divine Ruin, and you're they're basically healing for nothing, and let's say you hit them and Aphrodite uses her three or something, she actually can't use her three at all, even for the damage now, because it's going to heal you for so much. Obviously, they can get anti-heal too. You should, you should ask the devs about that, because that makes this item go from, oh, that's pretty cool, to, wow, that is really, 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 really strong. Because <laughs> then you just have one player dedicated to going 100% anti-heal, and now you're... Your, the opposing team is actually hurt for building life steal or anything like that. That actually destroys healing, I think, if that's the case. But then they can build anti-heal too, so it's, it's weird. It's one of those weird things. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Anyways, let's go to Amaterasu. Uh, increased charge rate from taking damage from 4 to 4.5. Okay. Increased charge rate. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, increased charge gain from hitting enemies. Okay, so she can charge your mirror faster. <clears throat> increased base damage. Okay. So, ama buffs. Is Fox Amy here? Nope. Okay. Artemis. Increased base damage on her traps. These traps, they have been sneaking in buffs. Have you guys noticed this? Sometimes this happens to things. These traps used to be like an inconvenience. But they're slowly getting to the point where it's like, you step in these, you're actually losing a good chunk of your health. If you stack three of these in the same spot, how much damage does that do? <laughs> okay, have a good one, Sin of Satan. Thank you for coming to the stream. If you stack three of these in the same spot, that's quite a bit of damage. <laughs> that's funny. I like that. Decrease cooldown. Oh, nice. 
So easier early game. Uh, late game is the same. Good stuff because Artemis' late game is good or can be good. Her early game is what she struggles in. Uh, more movement speed on her too. They're pulling a Scotty, where essentially they're giving an immobile god a bunch of movement speed. Fair enough, I guess. Increase cooldown. Oh, no, decrease cooldown. Okay. So better early game. Baba Yaga buff, decrease cooldown on her three by two seconds. And increase shield health on her alt from 50% to 25%. Ooh, it's kind of good. Increase knockback strength from 330 to 400. I yeah, I guess, yeah, that's good. Like, if they're diving on you and you ult, they get away from you, and then you can bombard them with your ult. Yeah, that's good. Tainted only heals you for the healing that Tainted still reduces. The wording is confusing. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, if it was the other way, uh, Black Guy, I was about to say, you better tell them that that's going to be problematic. <laughs> problematic. No, that's cool. It's cool either way, though. I mean, I'm happy with Tainted still. So let's see, they're buff Baron. Increase hysteria applied from base text from 2 to 5. Increase hysteria applied from 10 to 15. Added power debuff duration to the description. Did not. Okay, well, whatever. Increase cooldown from 15 from 11 to 13 to 11. Okay, so Baron buffs overall. Cool stuff. Okay. Daji. Uh. 1,000 cuts, I think, is her two, so they lowered the cooldown on that, which is good. Yeah, there's a lot of changes. We're almost done with them, you guys. Increased ammo count from... Okay, so Hachiman, when he activates his one, he gets three shots. Now when he levels it up, he gets four shots. Okay, can you cancel this ability? I think you can, right? Because I, I know sometimes when I'm using Hachiman and I'm trying to hit tower, I have to cancel my one or whatever, right? Uh... Yeah, I think you can cancel it. Otherwise, if you can't, this is going to be kind of weird <laughs> for when you're tr like trying to poke while hitting tower. You don't think you can cancel it? I don't see a reason to. Well, with the ranged autos, you actually can't hit like towers and stuff, right? Or did they change that a while back? I don't play Hachiman too much, but when he came out, when you use your one and you're like trying to hit your opponent, if you decide you want to hit the tower instead, you can't. So you have to shoot your shots and then hit the tower they might have changed that a while back but i don't actually know uh, again i don't play him that much uh decrease cooldown which is cool decrease mana cost which is i'm surprised about that because hachiman passive literally gives him so much mana that i'm surprised he gets any mana decrease but okay increase physical power scaling from 45 to 55 percent so when you use that Heavenly Banner and he's fighting you in that, remember that I think all physical characters, they get 100% of their physical power onto their auto attacks, right? So his auto attacks are getting buffed by 55%. I didn't know it was already that high to start with. That's pretty good. You should just run. No more fighting Hachiman in his banner at all. Just run. Increase attack speed as well. Wow, and he gets two stacks of that too, so 40%. That is so good. You can cancel Hachiwan? Okay, cool. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Thank you. <clears throat> so Hades, buff, Hades buffs, Devour Souls, 11 to 10 seconds, and Pillars of Agony. This is kind of big. I think I like these changes because it requires, it's like big brain stuff, right? When Pillars of Agony damages an enemy, all of Hades' other cooldowns have their, uh, have their cooldowns reduced by 0.2 seconds. This might not sound like a lot, but let's pretend I'm Hades and I'm, my opponent is in the Fire Wave. I can blink, use my 2 and 3, which would immediately do a ton of damage, like half their health, right? And then I can alt to instantly get like one second back on my 3, and then like let's say I have Staff of Mirrodin or something. I don't know. Like I imagine, I imagine like if I'm hitting like ten minions plus my the enemy god, you're getting quite a bit of uh, cooldowns back. You cancel the alt early to two and three again. That's the type of stuff I'm thinking of. I don't know. It's, is that going to be used? Almost never. But you can do stuff like that. I think this is more so that Hades doesn't get bullied relentlessly and then doesn't have his one to get away. But either way, it's cool. 
uh, fighting Hades is sometimes pretty difficult in duel, but I think that's a cool change. So Hades, in, uh, I mean, excuse me, Hebo buff, which is gross. Uh, his ultimate now hits harder. And when I say ultimate, I mean his one, of course. How they buffed her one? Really? Her one hits so hard because you can use it twice. Hal's one of those characters where if she can hit her one, like, all the time, you're so dead. Because early game, just the one-one combo hits you for almost, like, most of your health, to be quite frank. And uh, she gets it back fast, so that's scary for Duel. I mean, another game modes, not really, but still. Interesting. They buffed her three, too. All right, we're almost done. So Hera buffs Argus gets some big beefy arms. He went to the gym. First hit 35%, second hit 35%, third hit 45%. Wow. Pretty good. That's a lot of damage. Royal Assault, uh, she gets uh more damage on that as well, which is her one. <clears throat> Yorm, they buffed his base attack. I like that. And they buffed the move speed on his three, which I love. Kelly, uh, more mana to her, really. That's pretty good because Kelly struggles with mana. Uh, now, keep in mind, this is an increased mana scaling, so she does get more mana right away, but it's not like she gets more over time with levels. So, uh, they decreased Nimble Strike, though, so, I mean, you're getting more... You're essentially getting more mana in that case, then, because, uh, I mean, even more mana, because you're not having to use so much on your that ability. It also increased her 2 damage. Oh, wow. But quite a bit, too. Or no, not. No, never mind. Uh, increased by 30 in the late game. Increased by, like, 6 in the early. Yeah, not. it's, a, it's a, like a small amount. Never mind. Decreased mana cost from 70 to 60. So that'll help her with her mana problems as well. Mulan. Big Mulan buffs. Mulan needed it. Uh, so increased base health, 480 to 490. Increased base health per level, 82 to 84. It's just going to be a lot tankier, okay? Or somewhat tankier. Increased physical power scaling from 30% to 35% on her cross strike, which I think is a 1. So that's a good amount of damage. Like, you can even see right here, good amount of damage, good scaling. Grapple, she now gets 5% protections in addition to the move of speed when mastered. That's good, because grapple didn't really do much when you mastered it. I mean, it was okay. 5% protections is pretty strong. Oh, and when they say 5% protections, I'm assuming that applies to her base protections and items she builds. Or, or is it just this? I don't know. But if it's to everything, that's pretty good. Base and items. Yes, very good. I'm doing good, Thor. I'm doing good. We're just going through patch notes right now. Okay, Odin, decrease cooldown from 16, 15, 14, 13, 12 to 15, you know, down to 11. So essentially lowered all of Odin's cooldowns except for his alt, I suppose. Or no, this is... Is this his alt? No, this is three. So lowered all of his cooldowns except for his alt. Pretty good. Or no, excuse me, not the three either. On a three, they instead increased uh, physical power scaling. So Odin buffs, we like Odin. Odin's fun. Um, they increased the magical power scaling on Overflow Divinity. Oh, I don't remember which ability that is. I think it's his two. If that's the case, if they increased it by 10% on each shot, that can't possibly be, right? That's a lot of damage. Like, more than a lot of damage. That's, that's a ton of damage. That's almost doubling the damage on his two, which already did a good amount. Even if you don't get all the shots. If you do get all the shots, they're dead now, officially. I mean, I think this... If, if I'm understanding that correctly. Unless this is his 3. Maybe this is 3. I don't know the name of his abilities. If this is his 3, then that's fine. Uh, sanctioned Field. Decrease cooldown from 140 to 100 to 120 to 100. Okay. Uh, Odin all run alt was super, super long. Now it's not as long as in the, in the early. Fair enough. He gains 40% crowd control reduction while in this area. Man, as if he wasn't slippery enough in it. That's a cool change. So if you try to Ymir freeze him in it, not only is that CC shorter because he's being time dilated, but now it's even shorter than that because he has 40% cooldown 
or crowd control reduction. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. He's going to be very slippery in that ultimate. I think if he fires the ult, if you're in it with him, doesn't matter what you have, you're going to take a ton of damage, and he's not, quite frankly. Yeah, that is a pretty big change. And Raditosker, so again, uh, Boots got removed from the game, and they gave everyone 18% movement speed, so they're going to nerf the Acorn so that Raditosker isn't zooming around the map. So 8%, to 2%, 10%, 4%, 10%, 4%, 20%, 6%. Which is like, I understand. But I feel like they could have given Rat still a little bit more movement speed, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think it had to be changed down to 6 and 4%. Could have been a little bit more, but yeah, I mean, they had to adjust it a little bit, otherwise it would have been too much. By the way, uh, good that they rem they remembered to do that. <clears throat> God, you guys, my stomach is bothering me, and I'm like, while I'm talking, I feel like I like gotta like burp really badly, but I can't. So I'm like in this in between, and it feels awful. It feels terrible. All right, let's let's continue. I had to say that because man. <laughs> Anyways, Susano can refire Typhoon while dead. So if he's charging up his ult and he dies, he can uh, fire it. I think you can aim Typhoon while dead too. I'm not 100% sure if that was a myth or something. I saw it in a clip where someone died and they were aiming it while dead and they got a kill off of it. But I, I don't know if that was intentional or a bug because I remember trying it once and it didn't work at all. So either way, you can choose when to fire it, which is super good. Because right now you essentially burst down Susano and then you just time the ult and leap away or whatever. Oh, that's true. Uh, Desu in my chat, he points out, before the acorn was 2% over boots, now he gets 6% more than over other players. That's very true. So yeah, they, we'll, we'll see what happens. For If anything, Rad Tosker might have to be tuned down. Uh, but But we'll see. The way I see it is that Rat's sacrificing an item slot for boots. And now, before, it was kind of like, well, that wasn't really a problem until late game with Speed Potion. But now it's like he's sacrificing that slot right away. So the Acorn better be way better than the other items, you know. And it's his passive, too. He's sacrificing his passive and an item slot now. So, you know, interesting. Okay, so Thor buffs. Thor is a hype god, and he doesn't get... I mean, I don't see him too much, so... Increased radius, that's cool, because, you know... I mean, it's just cool in general that he gets his... He gets his passive, because you're still near them. 55 new units, you're still near them. You, he should get his passive. I agree with this change. Uh, that he gets increased power when near enemy gods. And then increased physical power scaling from 90% to 100% on his ult. Cool, that's quite a bit. His combos can be even more deadly. Uh, Thoth buff, I don't like Thoth, but... I mean, I kind of do. It depends, but they buffed his three. Fair enough. Uh, both, I mean, quite honestly, both probably could use the buffs, but I think when he's strong, he's very, very, very annoying. This was the change Tiamat needed. I think even they don't. I don't even think she needed the other crate, other serpent nerfs as much as this one. Uh, well, maybe no, she did. But essentially, if a serpent damages a phoenix or a titan now they take one hit of damage. So it doesn't matter if you have six serpents, you know, they hit the Phoenix once, they hit the Phoenix twice, they're dead. No, like that's the end of your split push. You can split push until you get to the Phoenix, but that's the end unless you're there to support them, which is completely fair. Uh, so, okay, so some beast decreased lifespan from 30 seconds to 15 seconds. Uh, that's fair enough. Freya, they're trying to lower her mana cost, you know, baby steps, right? With Freya... With Freya, she's a very sensitive god in terms of she's either very strong and frustrating or very weak. So I think at this point, they should be doing baby steps like this to try to get her somewhere. Uh, you know, it's a baby steps. Nox, she can clear the waves better with her one for the minion damage. Uh, it's actually has pretty good scaling now, so... Okay, so Yemoja actually has some big changes, and I was, I'm happy to talk about these. So Yemoja no longer needs to gain mana or MP5 to get Omi. So I think that's completely fair. She gains one Omi at level 6, 11, and 16. 
and mana MP5 are now converted to health at a rate of 20%. So there, she's getting the Kakoan treatment. And Kakoan, you know, he gets health for mana, and she does as well. I mean, I think that's fair. They're the only ones in the game with this type of mechanic. And before, it just felt so weird trying to get Yamoja's passive with this. So now, now, now you don't have to, like, limit what you're building and being like, oh, I'm, I have too much mana, or oh, I don't have enough mana. Now you just, you know, you get Breastplate for the cooldown, which gives you Omi regeneration and stuff like that, and you don't got to worry about it because you're getting health. So, yeah, good Yamoja change. This is also a great change, and I think now that they're changing this, so that, essentially, let me summarize. You can't spam the ability anymore. So if I have Bouncing Bubble, and I use Bouncing Bubble, and then I use the one that, that uh, whatchamacallit, stuns, you can do that back to back, right? You can do those instantly. But if you try using a bouncy bubble again, there's a slight delay. And that's what was the frustrating thing about fighting emoji when she came out, you know, that she could spam her one like with no delay. So now you can still do one one, but if you try to do one 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 one, there's gonna be delays and you can't do that. So that's cool. Uh good change. Good very very good change. Because from my standpoint, a Yamoja player this isn't that frustrating. Like you can just use the two, the one twice or whatever, and change the fight that way. But from someone fighting Yamoja, it's a lot less frustrating because you're not getting stun locked, which they kind of already removed. But still, it can be a thing. Can you view the item store while not in game? I think so. Yeah, if you go to items here, you can go to the item store here. But I don't think it's gonna have new items. Wait, they have Mark of the Vanguard? What the heck? Mark of the Vanguard takes me back, man. Watch his gift. What's up with this? This has all the old items. Watch his gift, you guys. Hey, look at that. Look at all the boots. They're still here. Let's see if we can find any really old items. Let's see if we can find, uh, what, what was it called? Ring of Focus? <laughs> I doubt it. Broke. An item there's soul stone you guys remember soul stone gain one stack every time you hit an enemy with a base tack when you have five stacks your next uh time you deal damage with an ability stacks are consumed you gain 40 mana and then next ability gets 40 magical power yeah dude soul stone i love soul stone to be clear these items are not coming back by the way i'm just looking at them because apparently they're here Just Swift Wings. Swift Wing was such a meme. <laughs> Evolved Lono's Mask and and Lono's Mask. <laughs> Ringda's Mask, Bumba's Mask. Fighter's Mask. Oh man, you guys, these items. We're getting to some. I, think, I guess not super old. What is this? Oh, that's a current item. Cool stuff. Yeah, those items aren't coming back, but cool patch. I think it's awesome. I'm going to end the video here. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to explain real quick what's happening, though. You guys feel free to comment down uh, what you feel about you know, the patch notes. I'm sorry I went so slow, but there was so much. So, so much, and it was a little confusing. But uh, right now, I am actually away. Like, I live in New Mexico, right? And right now, I'm on trip across the country. And how I'm streaming is I'm using my laptop to control my PC back home. And that's how I'm doing this stream. But, there, you know, there's some technical difficulties and stuff. So I apologize if there's any of that. I'm actually in a Discord call with myself to get the audio working. So it's very confusing. But anyways, I hope that's fine. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And make sure to comment your thoughts. And, yeah, have a fa fantastic day. I'm going to end the recording now. And I'm just going to talk with you guys about how you guys feel about it. So let's do that.